Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage, live from the spare bedroom where all the goodies are being kept. So this is going to be a short video, I just want to let you know how you get access to your ECU and the reason why I'm doing it. Uh, the main reason is I got these brand new Bosch 32 pound fuel injectors and it comes with a little USB thing that you need to program into your ECU in order for them to work. So if you're doing this stuff to your car and the engine's still in, you're not taking it out, good luck because the ECU looks very, very tight in there. So I'm just gonna do a short video on how to remove that as this light is just murdering me. You know, just show you how to disconnect it and all that fun stuff. So so initially just looking at it, it looks like just two bolts that so you can just pull the whole plastic, you know, case, I guess you could call it, off the firewall. End of the day, I have to get this ECU taken out to get these fuel injectors programmed and kind of get a rough tune so that I could drive the vehicle to a tune shop and they could dyno it and do all that fun stuff. These brand new squirty boys are obviously bigger than the stock ones. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Let's get outside and start disconnecting that. Okay, we are live from the engine bay. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts here. There's one on the other side, can't really see it. Got my wiring harness in a bag. But anyway, you gotta lift this up to get it up, but you can't slide it back because this bracket's in the way. So I'm gonna loosen those bolts, slide this whole thing forward, and then I should be able to push this back and be able to lift it off. So that's kind of the little struggle we got going on here. So I'm gonna loosen those bolts, like I said, 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna loosen them up real quick and get this thing exposed. All right, guys, got these two little bolts out. I'm just gonna lay these here. So now this thing's free to move. I can lift this up and slide this back, hopefully with one hand. There we go. All right, there we go, that's off. So now we have access to our ECU, which I've never done this before, but looks like you got these two bolts here. So you gotta take them out. They're probably like an eight millimeter and then disconnect this harness and then get access to our ECU. So we can send it out to the shop, get it tuned and you know, see how that goes. So we'll try and figure this out real quick. Okay, so screwing around with this, uh, these little bolts, I believe they're like a seven millimeter, but I didn't have one. So I got a nine 30 seconds and that backs that out. Now that does not come out. It loosens, but it pulls the wiring harness off. So I'll show you in a second. So if you just watch right there, I will start spinning this. If I get the sun glare out of the way. So as I back it off, as you can see right there, it's starting to rise up. Now, when you get to a certain point, you don't want to bend the little plugs down there or the little, uh, little stakes. So come over here and kind of give this a pull up too so it's even. So I pulled that up, it's even. So this side just wants to come up by itself and this side wants to stay in. There's a rubber gasket, that orange thing. So let's get this the rest of the way out. And eventually it just gets to a point where it's really loose and it just comes right out. Let's see what we got. There we go. Okay. So now that's disconnected and we should be able to pull our computer out. Actually, you know what? This whole thing's disconnected. I'm just going to yank this. Yank. So I don't want to get any trash in there. And also because these things are very similar, I marked one in for inside of the engine bay and one for the outside of the engine bay. And we'll be able to clean this mess up too while we got this out. But wrap that in a bag, plastic, whatever you gotta do. Keep that sealed from the elements because you do not want that screwed up because if you do, you got a brand new wiring harness or at least that aspect of it, which would suck. Put these two little bolts back in so we don't lose them. And that does it for removing the ECU. So we'll get this thing out, put it somewhere safe. I'm probably gonna put it in a plastic bag just to uh, keep crap from getting inside, just make sure your little gasket stays on because that is very, very important. And then I'm gonna show you a new product that I got. It's, uh, it's a racing oil pan baffle 
So this thing comes out and the new one's got trap doors. I will show you that in a second, but we're going to try and get this guy out and do away with it because I want to paint this oil pan, get it all nicey nice and you know, gasket we really don't need anymore because I got a new one. Project's coming along. Uh, I'm going to try and swap this out real quick and go from there. All right, guys, I am here with the improved racing oil pan baffle. So apparently this thing just direct swaps with that. And this one's got little flappy doodle doors. I don't know if you can see them. Let's go on this side. But they open and close to prevent oil from escaping and getting away from the pickup tube because the pickup tube goes right through that hole right there. Ooh, ooh. And yeah, so it's just, uh, put that down right there. So allegedly, there are just a handful of what look like 10 millimeter bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like six little 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in. Now, I don't know if you have to remove this tube yet. I gotta play around with that. And just one other grievance I wanna air. For some reason they put rivets holding on the oil pan gasket. I don't know why, there's only two of them. There's one there and there's one back here. So I gotta drill them out at some point to get this little turd off. And also one other little housekeeping note, I guess you could say. It looks like I only have to disconnect like two or three different plugs on the wiring harness and I could take the whole thing out now that the or ECM is disconnected. So I may go that route just to, uh, so when I clean the engine bed, I don't have to worry about wires getting wet. The only thing I would have to worry about is the plug for the air conditioning pump or the clutch, whatever. Uh, it just has a, an opening there for a plug, so I would just have to cover that up and then I could just douche the entire inside. And then at the end of the video, after I swap this thing out, I will show you, well, I didn't get it yet, but I will show you what I plan on doing with another system on the car. So stay tuned for that. So anyway, let's get working on this little guy. All right, guys, I'm gonna use this awesome Ryobi, not sponsored little battery ratchet this thing is awesome can't believe it's only 80 bucks at home depot but we're going to take off these six bolts and we're going to see if we can sneak this thing out without pick, taking this tube off because i don't know if there's any more gaskets in here on this side or this side that are required for that so i don't really want to mess with it so here we go All right, we got all those little stupid things off. So let's see if uh, we can just pick this thing out. Nope. So this tube's gotta come off, so I gotta figure that out. Okay, so we got 10 millimeter bolt here. So I'm assuming that this threads all the way through to the other side, picks that thing up, then I'll release that. And then on the other side, two 10 millimeter bolts. I'll show you that in a second, but let's knock these out first. So those two came out uneventfully. Stick that there, stick this here. Okay, now on the oil filter side, there's two more that are 10 millimeters now. I'm hoping that these are not just nuts and then you need something else to take this off because I believe I do not have the tool for that. It looks like a reverse Torx head, but you're gonna find out along with me. Okay, so those little studs, they go through here I'm hoping that this whole thing just pulls out with it. So let's give it the old, uh, come on, let's try. Oh, it does, nice. All right, so this little front piece comes off too. So that's good. And then these little studs just come out with it, nice. Okay, so we're already hitting our first speed bump. So I think you kind of want to get those off. Damn it. So there are these little douchey fins here that get in the way. So you can either resort to violence and smash them down, which I'm kind of thinking about doing. But first let me see if I got the correct socket for the ends here. Like I said, they're like little reverse torques. So we'll give that a go. If not, I am breaking these little tabs off so we can pull this thing out. All right guys, I found a little socket. I did have it. It is an E5, which is tiny. If you're gonna do this, Get one of these little guys, you could probably order it individually off Amazon, but it's an E5. So we're gonna knock these little studs out. 
hopefully this doesn't mess them up. But we're gonna give it the old college try. Okay, so actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave that in. I'm gonna try something. So we can slide this out and do that. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so that spins it out of the way. So I was able to just pick this tube up and just put it right there. That gives us the room to take this thing out, which it should. I don't see why it wouldn't. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what we got. And we are out. All right, guys, so that's what the inside of the stock oil baffle looks like. Notice there's no trap doors. It's kind of just a thing hanging out there. And this is what the inside looks like. All right, guys, before I go any further installing this thing, I'm going to clean this oil pan out because who knows what's in there. It's been 20 years. Might be some junk in there that we don't want, so I have it out, might as well do it. So I'm gonna spray this down, clean it out real quick, and then we will install the racing baffle and you know go from there. All right guys, we're gonna put this little bugger in and uh Get us towards the end of this video. We'll put the tube back in. Tube. I'm only gonna put these in finger tight and put them in with a ratchet. I don't wanna use the power ratchet and potentially strip this thing. So I'm just gonna do what I gotta do with this. All right, just like that, our new improved racing baffle is in. Uh, you know, the only difference I can tell is that there's more openings and the little flappy doors and the more opening here, I guess, to allow more oil to get in there quicker so it doesn't starve. That's about the only conclusion I could come to. So I'll get that little tube put back on and we'll wrap this video up. Alrighty guys, we got everything hooked back up. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm going to cover something else that I want to get and actually I already ordered it and I'll go over it when it comes. But, this is a stock slave cylinder for the transmission, and I'm going to be upgrading that. Along with the slave cylinder. So, when those come in, I'll do a quick review on them, and the reason why I am changing it out. And I'm still looking for a master cylinder, so I think I have to go the remanufactured route. But while everything's out of here, I may just go to a junkyard and see if an 05, 06 everything will fit in here so that means the booster the master cylinder and we'll see if that works so instead of buying a new one go to a junkyard get it cheap see what i can do when i make the video to put all that stuff in then i will go over it more in detail so again thanks for watching like subscribe comment if you got any questions let me know i maybe i went over it already and i can answer it for you other than that wait for the next video probably going to start putting the engine together in the next video or my jeep video that i've been promising it's sitting out there being a menace the battle wagon as i have named it so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one